supramolecular chemistry is very important for the exams like NEET, IIT, JAM entrance, GATE, CSI, NET, and also for BSc, BPharm, MSc, and MPharm exams. This supramolecular chemistry is uh, such a discipline which covers the chemistry of molecular assemblies and the intermolecular bonds and uh, most often it deals with organized entities that result from the association of two or more chemical species that help together by intermolecular forces okay and uh, this supramolecular approach is important in many senses as it has been used extensively to create artificial ion channels for the transport of sodium and potassium ions into and out of the cells and also important to the development of new pharmaceutical therapies by understanding the interactions at a drug binding site. So this is uh, very important and developing very recently in a very fast pace. Recently in colloids, liquid crystals, biomolecular condensates, micelles, liposomes and biological membranes, uh, supramolecular assemblies are can or can be found and the dimensions of the supramolecular assemblies can range from the nanometers to the micrometers. So with this brief uh, background of the supramolecular chemistry, let's see. Before we move directly to the supramolecular chemistry, maybe we can have a very quick look at the chemical uh, bonding or chemical reactions of covalent bonds. Okay, so when the covalent bond uh, is mostly involving the sharing of electrons between two atoms as you can see in case of hydrogen molecule here if you can see here with the hydrogen molecule the the sharing of one electron produces the hydrogen molecule and in case of the chemical reactions which uh, non, nothing but the breaking and formation of the covalent bonds you can see when uh, two hydrogen molecule react with one oxygen molecule to produce uh, two molecules of water and this is the, the space filling model for that. Now, uh, how to counter with or how to deal with uh, the supramolecular chemistry or how to distinguish that with the covalent bond chemistry or our usual chemical bonding uh, phenomena. So if we look in that sense, so the, for the synthesis of covalent molecules, uh, first the covalent molecules are very robust and they are well defined in terms of uh, or in the level of atomistic level and control over structure and composition in small molecules as well in case of covalent molecules. Also, it is difficult to synthesize uh, very large and complex molecules uh, overall by means of covalent bonding only. Okay, and uh, uh, most often it consumes uh, much time and uh, it, it it needs intense resource of uh, high expensive uh, chemicals or uh, reagents such like that. So compared to that, when we are talking about the synthesis of supramolecular complexes, it, it involves the dynamic structures that can form, that can dissociate and that can change over the time. So it gives you the flexibility in, in terms of synthesizing supramolecular complexes or large complexes. And also it gives the stability, specificity of structures and components which are defined by the affinities. And it enables the assembly of very complex and large structures, uh, for example, uh, large protein molecules uh, and uh, the hormones, such things. So in that case, it, it gives you uh, upper hand in terms of uh, self-assembly or molecular assembly. So in that sense, the supramolecular chemistry differs from the covalent bond chemistry and gives you uh, or gives us upper hand in terms of those factors. If we compare the molecules to supramolecular assemblies, we can see that the molecular precursors, you can see over here with different shaped uh, and you can see this, uh, this part with different shaped and color. The, these molecular precursors can combine with each other to form uh, the molecular structure which is basically the molecular chemistry that we study and this molecular chemistry involves the covalent bonding or covalent molecule in overall and it involves or gives the specific characteristics or properties such as the chemical nature, shape, redox properties, the homolumo gap, 
the polarity, the vibration, rotation, and magnetism and chirality, those properties. Similarly, when this uh, we using this molecular chemistry, guest molecules and host molecules are prepared and then they are fit together to give a supramolecular complex which uh, contain the degree of order interactions between the subunits and the symmetry of packing and intermolecular interactions are there to study that gives us specific characteristics and properties which usually we don't get in the molecular chemistry level such as the recognition, catalysis, transport. So those phenomena are better realized by means of supramolecular chemistry uh, if we talk about the host case chemistry only. Okay, so this is the advantage of the supramolecular chemistry we can say. Now, when we talk about the supramolecular chemistry, if you go to the Wikipedia, you will find that it is defined in such a way that supramolecular chemistry refers to the domain of chemistry beyond that of molecules and focuses on the chemical systems made up of a discrete number of assembled molecular subunits or components. Okay, now the Shaw Mary Lane, the scientist who got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1987, described the, the supramolecular chemistry in a, in a most interesting phrase like the chemistry beyond the molecule and the chemistry of molecular assemblies and of the intermolecular bonds. When we talk about the supramolecular chemistry, I think these are the phrases that, that are sufficient to describe the supramolecular chemistry and the best suited ones. Here in the some of the representative examples of supramolecular chemistry or supramolecular structures are shown over here. First, you can see in the left side one, this one here, this is the naturally occurring DNA structure, perhaps the best known self-assembling structure in the biological systems. And it exists in a double helical form. We know that much, uh, uh, every one of us. The two single strands here are together by a number of hydrogen bonds, which involves acidic hydrogen atoms, oxygen atom and nitrogen atoms of the purine and pyrimidine bases that we know in order to maintain the double helical structure of the DNA molecule. Now in this double helix, the guanine forms triple hydrogen bonds with cytosine and uh, in the other way, the adenine forms double hydrogen bonds with thymine. So ATGC, these uh, hydrogen bondings are there. Uh, basically guanine selectively interacts with cytosine because the GC complex is much more stable than the GT complex, which eventually would have uh, or would form only one hydrogen bond. Similarly, adenine exclusively complexes with thymine because adenine would form no hydrogen bonds with cytosine at all. Okay, so therefore the hydrogen bondings are at the level of AT and uh, GC. Okay, and then we have uh, the cell membrane structure, very important one in, uh, in the supramolecular structure. And uh, again, the complex protein structures, several protein and uh, very complex structures, which eventually difficult uh, to synthesize by means of only covalent bonding in uh, covalent bonding terms. So supramolecular chemistry plays a pivotal role in this kind of uh, structural molecules. Then comes the this one. It's the iron containing circular helicates where the central gray atom, which you can see over here, is the chlorine atom and the outside these uh, five, the small gray atoms here, these are the iron atoms uh, for forming the supramolecular complex structure. So additionally, with this, you can think of the molecular rotors or molecular machines, uh, which are another beautiful examples and very important examples of supramolecular structures. So before I go into the classification of the supramolecular chemistry with this following supramolecular structure that have been shown here, uh, one thing is very important to mention that there exist a number of non-covalent interactions which play a major role in building of supramolecular blocks that we can see here. Okay, so among these, uh, the, uh, the non-covalent interactions, the most important or the strongest one is the ionic and the dipolar interactions, which also subdivided or maybe which also incorporate the ion-ion interactions, ion-dipole interactions or dipole-dipole interactions. 
So the ionic or dipolar interactions can be classified into those three categories that I said just now. In addition to this one, uh, as I said in case of DNA molecule, hydrogen bonding is very important, pi interactions are important, van der Waals interactions are important, uh, hydrophobic effects, solvent effects, those are also very important uh, forces, intermolecular forces and non-covalent interactions which plays a pivotal role forming supra supramolecular building blocks or complexes. Next, we should move to the classifications of supramolecular structures. Basically or broadly, it, it can be divided into two categories depending on the properties of the components and the interactions involved. And as you can see over here, these are mainly the, the host guest chemistry as you can see here and also the self assembly. So these are the two main classifications that broadly involve or uh, classifies the supramolecular structures. And uh, in case of host guest and or you can say the lock and key mechanism or that chemistry, uh, in case of host guest chemistry, the larger molecule that binds at least one smaller compound is uh, in that case, these are known as the host guest chemistry. And usually the larger molecule is known as the host and the smaller one is uh, treated as the guest molecule. And typically the discrete, these discrete complexes can form larger structures through a self-organization process. Whereas in case of self-assembly, the association of multiple components that are of approximately similar size, uh, they, they, they combine together to form the self-assembly uh, or self-assemble structure in supramolecular uh, uh, systems. It, in case of self-assembly, it can also result in the formation of discrete nanoscale structures and also the macroscopic complexes. So the, the endeavor or the area which covers the self-assembly of supramolecular systems are uh, quite large in that sense. Here, uh, it, is it is important to mention that in case of host guest chemistry, there can be example of the crown ethers. It's shown over here and it can be the cyclodextrins and I will come about this, uh, the details of host guest chemistry and self-assembly and also uh, regarding the non-covalent interactions uh, later on in my future lectures. I will come into detail for all those things. But here it is important to mention about the uh, very small glimpse of host guest chemistry. Here you can see in the structure that in that case, in that example, if we consider this one as the host molecule, which have uh, the binding sites, which perfectly matches in, in size of the guest molecule, which is this one. And then uh, in that case, the, the host molecule has to be capable of recognizing the binding uh, and binding a guest molecule in a defined confinement by means of non-covalent interactions. And the type of non-covalent interactions I have already mentioned. So uh, the, the examples can be the crown ether or uh, enzymes, those kind of things. And on the other side, the substrate or the guest molecule uh, has to be the compound that can form a complex with the host. Okay. So which can be this kind of compounds or molecules? This can be metal ions, cofactor or hormones. Here in that example, you can see the host is 18 crown 6 and the guest is the sodium ion. So it forms a stable structure of a supramolecular complex when the crown ether and uh, sodium metal or potassium ion can also be here. So these form complexes. And when these two, the host and guest combine together, they form the supramolecule and the complete complex can be referred as the host guest complex or the inclusion complex or sometimes the clathrate complex as well. Another example for that one is when the host is the protein receptor, this, the big one, the big structure, as I said, this generally uh, are often more often the macrocyclic compounds acts as host molecule and the drug here, which perfectly binds with the host molecule in the cavity is uh, the guest here. So these are the very short expressions of host guest chemistry in the next lecture. I will talk in detail about this one. Next comes the self-assembly. So in terms of the definition, we can think the spontaneous and reversible association of molecules or ions to form a larger, 
more complex supramolecular entity according to the information content in the molecules themselves and in that case uh, it not necessarily has to be always the host and guest not necessarily so it, it can be the other molecules which can segregate or uh, which can form uh, discrete structures by uh, by uh, means of the same self assembly or uh, in the supramolecular systems and there are several examples here for example in the in most biological uh, most biomolecular complexes and biological structures the self assembly can be seen and also in case of liquid crystalline structure these are also very evident now first here one example is uh, if we can highlight this one this is the cell membrane and uh, we know that the cell membranes uh, they separate the uh, the interior of all cells from outside environment okay so these are uh, the cell membranes and uh, they are the very uh, primitive example of self assembly in supramolecular systems the another one is chromatin Chromatin is a complex, we, we may know that the chromatin is a complex of DNA and protein that forms chromosomes within the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. So these are very wide <coughs> range of applications of self-assembly into the biological systems. Okay, so these are very important structures and uh, next comes the important parameters, the interactions which are typically weak compared to the covalent bonds i have uh, shared in the very beginning the comparison between the covalent bond and the supramolecular bonds or interactions and the formation of supramolecular uh, complexes depends on the type of interactions which type of interactions are preferred over there depending on the stability of the complex uh, 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 i mean can be determined then the solvent in which the supramolecular complex is uh, stabilizing the size of the contact surface, number of interactions, cooperativity, additivity, the pre-organization effects, the interactional complementarity, and the sterical and geometrical complementarity as well. So these are factors that controls the formation of supramolecules in uh, in wide range of applications. I have said in the beginning uh, that in very wide range, the supramolecular chemistry is applicable. So I will in my next lecture or the future lectures i will talk about the host guest chemistry i will talk about the non-covalent interactions and i will also talk talk about the effects here like the pre-organization effect the complementarity or i mean the spherical and geometrical all these the topics i will talk in my future lecture so please uh, uh, thank you for watching uh, this tg chemistry and please keep watching my channel and if you like the videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel to get more videos on supramolecular chemistry and overall in chemistry lectures as well. Thank you.